Welcome to the Once in a Lifetime series. In this video here, you're going to see a four-day epic trip exploring the southwest area of Colorado. But first, we're going to start in Chama, Chama, New Mexico. Then we'll continue right up on into Colorado. with one epic trip over the million dollar highway. And the journey starts right now. Left house heading up towards Chama, New Mexico. And that's getting up pretty close to the Colorado uh, state line up there too. Been raining a little bit all morning, but look at that, we got some blue sky, yay. So once I get up the road here a little farther, hopefully it clears up. We're going to see what we can find heading up to Chama. Look at my shadow, how long it is down there. Sun's still coming up. We're on top of a big summit up here. What a view, huh? Just crystal clear up here, my goodness. What a pretty place. We're about halfway up to Chama. Thought I'd stop. Way down in that valley is probably where we're heading. Look at that way out. You can see snow-capped peaks. That's got to be up towards Colorado. Which we're heading there tomorrow. We'll be in Colorado tomorrow. Yay. Van's all dirty now after driving through the rain. Oh, well. Maybe tonight I can wash it down. We're going to stay at an RV park up in Chama, too. All right, what do you say? Let's hit the road. Here's how I control the cameras uh, mounted the GoPros. That's front cam, and then also I have uh, the rear cam. It's the GoPro Quick App. Fire up the engine, away we go. The air is so fresh up here, my goodness, right after the rain. What a pretty drive this Highway 64 is. But, don't have too much farther. Maybe another, what, 40 miles, somewhere around there. Okay, well, we'll get back on the road here and uh, see what else we can find along the way. What a perfect trip so far through New Mexico. I've got to see a lot of sights so far. Northern New Mexico is one to come visit. There's a pole out. I'll try to find one. We'll get another shot of that view before we come down off this mountain. Looks like those clouds are getting behind us too. No more rain. Oh, cool. This is perfect. Front cam isn't picking it up. Wait to see this view. Okay, let's check her out. It is so quiet up here. All you can hear is the birds chirping. Way down there is where we're going. Absolutely perfect. What a view, huh? And 
say it's all downhill from here. I bet in the winter time this is a snow packed road, huh? Yeah, I'd say the rain's over. Clouds are going away. Been pretty lucky on the weather so far. I know it's hot. It's hot everywhere, but right up here on top of these mountains. Nice and cool. Road's still a little wet, not bad. A sea of trees, as far as you can see, huh? Big old forest. Pretty ride. For more information on my travels, be sure to check out my website, rvrtv.tv. There you can sign up for my free newsletter. Put one out twice a month. Also got a merch shop. Hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs, all kinds of cool stuff which help support the channel and future videos just like this one going to Chama. Sure is warming up quick coming off that mountain. <laughs> Doesn't take long, does it? Well, not too much farther, then we'll pick up a road that takes us straight up Chama. I was reading about Chama. They got an old railroad there. All kinds of cool stuff. Very historic town. All about mining. Everything dates back into the 1800s. Settlers going through there. All kinds of stuff. So hopefully we can do some exploring around there and check it out. Passing a few like farms and stuff, not a whole lot here. Very decent road though. Yeah, a lot of it's hidden by the trees. You can't see a whole lot from the roadway. But very decent road, this Highway 64. And here's our turn up here. We're going to start trucking north. Looks like we're connecting up with Highway 84. 84 and 64 it looks like. And still got blue sky. Check her out. From the mountains right down here to the flatlands, huh? <laughs> Definitely warmed up. I'd say a good 15 degrees just coming down off that hill. I know back in Arizona, I still get all the weather on my phone and computer and everything. And they say Lake Havasu is getting close to being 120. Phoenix is just cooking over 110 every day quartzites over 110 so tis the season right in the middle of july huh yeah we'll spend one night here and then uh, first thing in the morning we're going to go up pagosa springs which is not really far from uh, Chama. You go across the state line, Colorado state line. We'll be in uh, Colorado, I'd say about 20 miles from Chama, somewhere around there. We'll figure it out in the morning. Hey, hey, I think we made it. I think this is town here coming up. Clouds kind of came back on me too. Oh, 
all kinds of cabins down there, lodges. Wow. Pretty cool. Here's the Chama Lodge right here on the left. So we got a few motels. I'm sure people flock up here to beat the heat in the summer, huh? here okay 64 okay in the morning we'll be heading out this direction to the left town straight ahead ooh there's a visitor center let me uh, darn it let me get over there I got turn around Check it out a second. See, they didn't make it to town. I'm already goofing up. <laughs> Let me pull over here. Okay, we'll just make a quick stop. I don't know if it's open right there on the right, that building with the mural. Yeah, in the morning we'll be heading straight out this way. Heading to Colorado. I don't think it's open, but I see a storyboard. We'll stop and check it. It's closed, but I'll come back out here if we need to. Old Spanish Trail from 1829 to 1830. Explorers, huh? Talking about the route. Creating this area. Pretty cool. Alright, let's head to town. I'd say we're getting into downtown Chama. Historic downtown Chama. Be interesting what they have here. I know that railroad, uh, they run uh, up through the mountains, take scenic tours. I read a little bit about that. Kind of pricey though. Old brick buildings. There's the hotel. Looks like they got a little restaurant, cafe. Off to the right, I see railroad tracks. All right, let's go for a walk. I'll drive over there. This is definitely small town USA right here. Well, we got Edward E. Vigil Jr. First mayor of Chama in 1961. Population 1199. 7,800 feet elevation. Look at that. Big railroad uh, for mining back in the late 1800s. Points of interest. Shows the roads. Rush? Yeah. Well, cool. I just talked to a gentleman. Look at that. Even the trash cans are old. See what this says. Southern Gateway to Denver. 
Built when silver was king. Buildings in the yard. There's a train station. But I just talked to a guy. He recognized a van. He's a viewer. Friend of the channel. He said the railroad doesn't run today. They're closed today, but you can go down there and check it out. Sometimes they run the locomotive around the yard. But he says he comes up here to beat the heat. Comes up in the summer, spends a couple months. As a matter of fact, the same RV park I'm staying at. Railroads come to Charma, 1880. Wow. Fire destroyed the roundhouse. Huh. Tons of history, huh? Hundreds of years. What a cool town. Uh, let's walk down to the depot. It's open. I guess they sell tickets, even though their train's not running. Yeah, that gentleman said that they go up to Pagosa Springs up in Colorado, get big supplies, takes that drive, so we're going to have a very scenic drive in the morning. Getting out of here. Oh, look at the old car. <laughs> That's cool. And there's the local little church. A little steeple on it. Ah. That's cool. Nice big trees in town here. This is an old town. You can always tell by the size of the tree. And things are old. Well, we'll check out the railroad. Piles of coal for the steam engines. They gotta have a big water tank around here somewhere. Old buildings, part of the old railroad. They've seen uh, a lot of days, huh? Yeah, you can look right up. You, there's benches up there you can sit. Look down on the railroad. Right from the main street up there. What a way to spend your day, huh? Sit in Chama and watch the world go by. Probably wagons from when they used to unload supplies off the old trains. A lot of old cars sitting here. Look at the smoke, they're firing up an engine. Look at that thing firing up. That old steam engine's moving cars around the yard. 
Well, here's the depot is where you buy your tickets for the train ride. Well, let's check out the inside. All these buildings have been saved for National Historic Places. There's your map. Big old wood stove. Wood bench seat. Pretty cool. You can book a ride, probably call in advance. They probably sell out. Wood everywhere, nice stove to stay warm. I bet it gets colder in winter. All the cars are named. back here get a shot of that yeah elevation 78.63 so we're up there pretty good pretty nice temperatures it's probably about 80 right now those cars look spotless don't they look at the, how clean those windows are ooh flowers summer flowers Nice. All the old signs, baggage, wood siding on the buildings. This walkway deck, it's pretty new though. They've redone a lot of this, I bet. Antique everything, yeah. including me. <laughs> what a view they have up there, huh? And a little gift shop. Pretty cool. Well, it looks like a little park over here. Got some signs. There's no one here because they're not running a train today. I bet this lot would be full of people. Picnic tables. So you can sit down here, have a little lunch. Watch the trains leave and come in and out. That's kind of cool seeing that steam engine though, huh? I'd say they got this pretty well set up. Perfect. Well, what do you say? We'll go back up Main Street and finish walking town. Then maybe go find that RV park. Sure tell you're in higher elevations. Uh, air's a lot thinner. Shade feels good. It's actually starting to heat up a little bit. I need to swap out the camera batteries real quick. Then we'll finish walking around town. Old hot hotel there with a cafe. We seen motels when we came in the other end of town there. A little ways out. So you don't need an RV to be up here. Pretty cool looking statues. I bet hunting, fishing. Huge up here.
Looks like little gift shops, maybe. There's the bank, local bank over there. Boutique. Old style walkway. Pretty rustic looking, huh? Railroad Rebel Boutique. Must be the little park up here. Got a gazebo. Old antique truck sitting there. Not bad. Definitely small town USA. Back roads, small towns. That's what we're doing this summer. There's a big mural on the side of that building. We'll check that. That's an old building. Wow, look at that. That always amazes me. The size of those paintings, murals, in such detail. Quite the artist did that one. Another little gift shop. more shops. That's kind of it, I think, for downtown. That one's got a barrel roof on it. You don't see them like that anymore. Nice carved bear for the pole holding up the porch. But if you're looking for a perfect place to escape the summer heat, you're almost 8,000 foot in elevation. Get on up here to Chama, northern New Mexico. Small town, perfect weather, scenic railroad. This green is plush as far as you can see, huh? Well, cool. Well, it's getting on in the afternoon a little bit. We'll go find that RV park. I'll get checked in. And in the morning, we're heading up to Colorado, which isn't very far from here. Well, that RV park should be right up the road here off to the right. Had very good reviews. A lot of the stuff I always get asked uh, if I plan it, and yes, I do. I always plan the location where I'm heading, then the final details are usually in the last day or two where to stay and whatnot. And I like the campgrounds uh, with showers and restrooms and electric. Do a lot of editing on the road, so that's part of that too. All right, let's go find that RV park. Made it, this place is cool. All kinds of cool stuff, we'll go for a little walk.
there is a lot of sights in here. Big, tall trees, nice shade. There's a good chance of rain later. Thunder bumpers moving through. Plus the train tracks are right in the back of the park. They got a little gate you can go out. There's a, a bridge back there. The river for fishing. All kinds of cool stuff. There's our little office. Even got train cars here. Very well decorated. They spent a lot of time, energy, and bucks to make this nice, but this is a very nice park. There's the name Rio Chama RV Park, and their phone number. When the trains are running, they actually have the time posted at their office. You can watch a train go by twice a day, going up and then coming back down. Ten and four. So we'll go back to the back of the park, check the river, snoop around. <laughs> cool little cart full of flowers. You know, that always takes a little extra effort, but that sure looks good, huh? Very cozy place. You can hear that train whistle from down there at the depot. That's how close we are. Down there moving cars around today. Wow, look at all that firewood. What's this say? Warning. It says lock up your stuff. Nice pavilion. There's that bridge back there. Look at all the sights. This is a big park. More wood. They probably burn a lot of it in the winter. Little miniature train station of their own. This gate's open from 7 a.m. till dusk. Let's check it out. We've got benches to sit on. Oh wow, they're fly fishing right, right there. Put the waders on. Go catch dinner. What a view of the river. There's the railroad tracks take you up in the mountains. Just as green as it can be here. You can see all the RVs just nestled down in there between all the trees. Definitely get shade here. Still pretty warm. I mean, but it's July. It's warm everywhere. Swing around and right down there, there's town. There's the train station. That's why you can hear that train whistle. <laughs> what a perfect view, perfect place. Should have brought my fishing pole. 
in the waders. <laughs> I do most of my fishing at Safeway. Can you see the van down there? No, it's too hidden. I'm in space six. you'd have the perfect view for that train to go by twice a day. Looks like little trails you can hike through here, right down along the river. I bet there's other trails around town you can go on too. New Mexico doesn't disappoint, does it? I've been using my Starlink satellite dish every day on the road since I left Arizona and it has worked flawlessly. Even around trees like this, all you need is a little bit of an opening and it picks up a great signal. Well, good morning. We're off early. Sun's just coming up. We're heading to Colorado. We're gonna go up Pagosa Springs. This is still Highway 64. We're heading straight north. We're only a few miles from the state line of Colorado. We're in for a pretty ride this morning. Had a quiet and peaceful evening there at that Rio Chama RV park. Wasn't bad at all. Glad I stopped. Plus, Chama itself, what a cool little town with the railroad and everything. Definitely worth seeing. Put it on your list if you ever get up this direction. Okay, we're just going to head up Pagosa Springs, and then once we get up Pagosa Springs, we're going to head straight west. The goal is to get over to Durango, and then we're going to head north and continue our journey on. Up here, the road parts. This is where we say goodbye to Highway 64, been a good one, and we're going to stay on 84 straight up on into Pagosa Springs. Look at those mountains and cliffs coming in. You can sure tell you're getting near Colorado when you get in the mountains like this, the Rockies. Absolutely gorgeous. How's it like to live out here, huh? Picture perfect. There's your Kodak moment. Colorado, there's another good place that you want to escape the heat to stay up in the mountains up through here. Look at that view coming up. State line should be getting pretty close. 
Hey, make sure you check out uh, my website, rvertv.tv. Sign up for the newsletter. We put one out on the 5th and 20th now of the month. Well, according to the phone, we should be right on top of the state line here. Oh, just spot the signs on the left-hand side for New Mexico. Wait for it. Right here, see the difference in the road? Yay! And look at this, a welcome to Colorado sign. Let's stop. We did it. Welcome to colorful Ca Colorado. I almost said California. <laughs> Sorry about that. Colorado, look at this view. I bet it is colorful. Matter of fact, want to have a little fun? We'll walk back to New Mexico, what do you say? Yeah, we'll just head back on foot. <laughs> well, New Mexico has been a blessing to travel through. Look at this. Right here is the state line, right where the road changes. What a cool adventure since we left Arizona. Got to see a lot. Down through the ancient trails and then coming up through Grants, got caught the 4th of July parade, up through Santa Fe, Los Alamos, Taos, the Enchanted Circle, Chama. Not bad, huh? Pretty good road trip. Okay, we're going to walk back to Colorado right now. All right, it's official, back in Colorado. So long, New Mexico. I explored Colorado about four years ago, somewhat, not a lot. So this has always been high on the list to come back to. So we're gonna do quite a bit of back road, small towns, and sightseeing through this beautiful state. So are you ready? Oh yeah, what a view. As far as you can see. Sea of trees, mountains. Once we get our Durango, we're gonna truck north. We're gonna take that uh, million dollar highway up through Silverton here in a day or so. So get ready for that as well. There's our one last look at New Mexico. Northern New Mexico is definitely one to travel to. Right down there is your state line. Here we go, Highway 84. Don't have hardly any miles to do up through here. 
Once we get up the Ghost of Springs, we'll pick up Highway 160 and start trucking west. Kind of flattened out through here, didn't it? Wide open. Southern Colorado, it can get pretty warm. Pagosa Springs supposed to have hot springs, river running through it. We'll stop and check that. This should be it right up here, Highway 160. Now, four years ago, this is how I came through. I came from the east over. And that was pretty close to the end of summer four years ago. But I kind of drove straight through. I did not stop in Pagosa Springs or any of these other towns. But guess what? We're going to do it this time. No clouds, no rain like yesterday. Smooth sailing. Welcome to Bogosa Springs. Probably be as good a place as any to get some fuel. Say like right here, huh? Get fueled up and then we'll go find that little park. It's supposed to be a park downtown where the hot springs are. This won't take long. All fueled up. Check the phone, the map's on the phone. We should be really close to the park up here. Very old town. Rodeos are big around here. Horses and rodeos. Definitely out west. I think it's this light. Yep. Should be a little park that we can uh, grab a parking place right up here. like they got a music festival coming up in the July here. Here's the river. This is where some of the hot springs are supposed to be. And the visitor center's off to the right. We'll walk over there too. There's one of the hot spring resorts. I've never been to one, have you? I've never been to a hot spring resort. Wow, look at all the vans. There's a motorhome parked here. Must be a popular place. One van, two. Three, four, what is it? About five or six vans in here. Looks like campers. I'm going to go down to this other parking area. This one will work. I can back into one of these sites here. Perfect. Well, what do you say? We'll go for a little walk. Visitor centers across the street. Go up here and scope out the river. All 
All right, there's a San Juan River run through here. Wow, look at the rapids, huh? And the hot springs uh, flow into the river along through here too. walk down towards that visitor center. Part of the old towns over there. rapids are really moving. You know, with all the snow melt this year, everything is record water flow. Overflowing. Really doing for good for uh, Arizona and Lake Powell and Lake Mead. There you go. There's San Juan River. Visitor Center, if you're ever interested. Big map of the area. So you can get access to all the hot springs. Right across the river from here. One's called Nathan's Hippie Dip Hot Spring. <laughs> cool name, huh? Is that a little greenhouse or just a glass house? It's got a chair in it. <laughs> Another map of the area. Well, I bet there's gold in that river. I bet minerals, there's mining been going on here forever. You hear the roar of that water though. Oh, over there, there's that one hot spring. I don't know if you have to pay to get in it. Those folks are sitting in it right there. Hot water, right along the river. Powerful uh, flow right now. Yeah, they're having a good time over there in that hot spring. That's that hippie dip one. I <laughs> seen on the map. That's what they called it. All right. Well, make our way back towards the van. Still got a few more miles to do yet. Yeah, kind of a cool little glass house. Got a chair. Bet it's hot in there, I don't know. Interesting. Well, this is Highway 160. We're heading due west. I 
going to lay over tonight in Bayfield, a little uh, campground there in Bayfield. It's about 20 miles before you get to Durango. One sight to see if you're traveling along through here between Pagosa Springs and Durango is uh, Chimney Rock National Monument. Pretty cool rock formations. They're really known for their hiking trails. Well, just a few miles up the road will be Bayfield. Gonna stop at a park called Outdoorsy Campground. Very nice campground. I'm pretty impressed. Extremely well laid out. They got a creek running through here. All kinds of trees and greenery. Definitely make a stop here. Look at all the flowers around the office. Absolutely perfect. Water flowing everywhere. Isn't that nice? Totally different in Arizona, huh? <laughs> so I'm beating the heat up here in this uh, beautiful part of southern Colorado. Tomorrow we're going to head into Durango and then we're going to start trucking north. We're leaving Outdoorsy RV Park. What a campground. This place is really nice. This is Highway 160. Uh, this is the town of Bayfield, Colorado. And we only have about 20 miles. We're going to be in Durango. And we're going to go check out a railroad museum that I guess is just world class. Can't wait. And it's early morning. Uh, I was told back at that RV park last night get up here early and we'll catch the trains going out too. That Durango Silverton train goes all the way up in the mountains. We're not taking the train but we're going to check out the museum and all kinds of cool stuff around Durango. So this should be a really cool morning. Sit back, enjoy the ride. And the heat is on, the entire country's boiling hot. <laughs> Been checking my phone, I still get all the weather back home in Quartzsite in Arizona. It's like over 110 every day in Phoenix. Havasu's supposed to be up like 120 here. And right here, I think it's supposed to be in the 90s today, somewhere around there, blue sky, but it's warm. But also, uh, once we get up Durango, we're going to pick up uh, Highway 550. Takes us straight north, and guess where we go? Way up in the mountains. Plus, there's a hot spring that's bubbling out of the ground right off the highway once we get past Durango. That should be cool, too.
the folks I talked to last night at the RV park, uh, oh, we're getting close to our turn, were telling me uh, they rode the train uh, a few days ago, and it was hot. So the train doesn't go very fast, and it really heats up during the afternoons. It's a nine-hour ride up and back. You can either take a train up, take a, bring a bus back, or a train up and back. Pretty pricey, too. I would like to do it, but I would do it like uh, these people are saying, do it in the fall when you get all the fall colors, and cooler weather. But the Railroad Museum is free, and we should be getting in there pretty quick. Once again, this is another old-time mining town, railroads, cowboys, true western uh, Colorado for sure. When you look at it on uh, Google Maps, it's a pretty good sized town too. A lot of businesses, it's kind of narrow, follows along through the valley probably, between the mountains. Not sure of the population, but it's probably a pretty good. Okay, I think we're getting close to where the road will split. Ooh, I see pretty mountains right there. Look at that. All right, up here, yep, there's the signs. 160 will keep going. That takes you all the way down to, I think, Cortez and all in, on into Arizona. But we're going to pick up Highway 550 because guess what? We're not going back to Arizona for a long time. We're, we're on the road for over 110 days this summer. We're just getting going. Yay. Okay, I cheated. I have the phone here <laughs> all fired up we should be making a right this next street up here with the light yep this is old town this is old town Durango right off to the right's where the train station museum yep this is it was told to look for the McDonald's and the parking lots. Yeah, there's a parking lot right here on the right. But I'm going to do a drive around. Let's drive around the old town. Here's the train tracks where they probably go out. Wow, there's a lot of people down there already. Let me do this. I'll just do a loop around the block and then we'll go park. This is cool. Old buildings, look at them, brick. Looks like they got a dining area right out in the sidewalk. And here's the train station off to the right. Well, I better not goof around too much. I better go back and get a parking spot. Let me do that. I'll flip around and uh, we're going to go check out this museum. made it. Yay. <laughs> that parking lot was, there's a stream of cars going in there. The really nice parking attendant, he just said, if you just go to the museum, park. I told him I'm going to be here for like an hour or so. He said, just go ahead and park. Now the museum's all the way down here to the end. And all these folks here, they're getting ready to board the train. There's two trains going out. One is uh, diesel powered and the other one is steam powered. The Durango and Silverton Railroad. Good morning. They're pouring oil into the wheels. 
Getting ready to go climb a mountain in a train. There's the depot. Wow, there's a lot of cars. There's a lot of people. It's not cheap to go in this train. Good. This is a museum here? The museum is all the way down. Flat top going to the distance across the tracks. That nice lady knew I was lost. <laughs> See, there's those open seat cars, and that's a, what those people were telling me. They're in one of those and said it was just hot. When you're on the sun side, the train's not moving. They said it, it was very uncomfortable. There's no air conditioning or anything in these things. Do not cross. Okay, arrow says to museum. Well, must gotta go around the back side here. Well, I'll find it. on here my goodness look at this place this is more than just a train museum look at this they got cars motorcycles big old train engine and a ton of stuff <laughs> my goodness wow look at that Bobcat ready to pounce on me. Where do you even start looking here, huh? Pictures. A little bit of everything. Some old seating, I bet, from the old train days. Gotta have a fire engine in here. <laughs> My goodness. Those lights in the ceiling are kind of shining off the camera. Not a whole lot I can do with that. But we should see pretty good. Big old map. All the lanterns. My goodness. And about every animal you can think of. There's Bullwinkle. Bear skins, deer. Goodness, look at that fire, huh? That's not good. Huh. The history in this place, this has been decades collecting this stuff. Oh, I forgot my fishing pole. Look at these guys in there, people watching. Hey, did you bring me a worm? <laughs> well, they got a pretty good life in that tank, huh? Wow, I mean, this is just insane. I never, I didn't even picture this. I was expecting a bunch of train cars. <laughs> Which they have those too. Rocks, geodes. Ooh, what's out here? Oh, I hear, I hear a train. Too cool for a school if one comes out. Oh man. There it is. Look at this thing. 
there's a turnaround here. They're going to turn this train, and we're going to get to see it. Big old coal burner, huh? He's gonna park it right on that turn turnaround. Well, I sure want to thank those folks who tell me to get out here early. They said, you'll see it all get out here before 7 in the morning. They turned that train quick, didn't they? Oh, man. Look at that. Fire it up. All right. Time to go up a mountain. That has to be one of the hottest jobs in the world to run a steam engine, a coal burner, <laughs> in July in the summertime. My goodness. Well, that was cool. All right, what do you say? Let's go back in. Well, we'll just kind of wander around. There's spittoons. A boat motor. Got an airplane hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> oh, old cars over here. Oh, old wood boat. That was a luxury back in the day, an old boat like that. Solar powered little car there. They just got a little bit of every kind of history in here. I wouldn't mind having an old boat like that. Back in the day, that was pure luxury. Pretty good looking canoe over top of it too. And one horsepower carriage here. <laughs> Pretty good looking old cars. And the old fuel pump. That thing looks uh, brand new, doesn't it? Cool truck.
I mean, they just thought of everything in this place. There's that fire truck again. Hey, a train and a train museum. The amount of engineering, all the piping. It'd be fun to ride in one, wouldn't it? Up in the engine. Old pictures. Let's see, is this a four speed or a six speed? It's a four valve. Turn the valve and away you go. Isn't that something? pictures good old black and white everyone on a horse old time Colorado right here you got your rifle out <laughs> times are different back then huh Everything has a place in here in their time and history, this area. Free to come in, there's no admission. This doesn't cost anything. I've been to quite a few museums. Way, look at that big old cannon. Spend a lot of money to come in and see something like this. This is free. I bet some of these engines and stuff, they retired. They used to run the tracks. There's the furnace. Heats the water, makes the steam. The way it goes. I mean, how do you know which valve to turn? This is a massive model train setup. Got all the little towns, the cars running. Probably the shape of the mountains where it goes up through the passes, everything here, huh? Very, very well done. Glad I stopped here. Sounds like they got a movie going in here. All about the train ride. Look at that thing all powered up. Daily trips, Silverton. Yeah, look at that thing going, huh? Pumping out steam. They call it a narrow gauge track. 
Maybe it's just a smaller width, I guess. That'd be it. Instead of the big freight cars, freight trains. Pretty interesting. There's a mailbag. I didn't even notice this. This is an old Indian motorcycle here. Looks like from what? World War II? Even has a rifle holster on it. Look at that. Huh. Cool. More guns. Trying to shield the light <laughs> coming through the window on the camera. Pretty bright. And all the little sh soldiers and horses. That, all that's for their uh, model trains. Little figurines. Cannons. All kinds of stuff, huh? Well, this looks like a little more military memorabilia, uniforms. They rode a lot of trains back in those days. All the troops, troop transport. Oh, cool coins. Wow. Look at the size of those dollar bills. And what do we got out here? Got some farm animals, a tractor. Huh. Let's say we're about it down here at the end of the buildings. That's supposed to be the oldest locomotive right, right there, that number 42. Wonder how many people that thing hauled. All the cars, trains, trips up the mountain. Here comes number 42. Let's go inside. Let's just say it's a immigrant sleeper. Look how the beds fold up. Oh boy. <laughs> Do we believe in ghosts? All right, this thing's haunted. Yay. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> wow. Old wood seat. That train rattling down some tracks. You're up there in that bunk. <laughs> Where's the ghost? I don't see no ghost. Oh, this is where the, how they cooked. The well, train was going down the road. Or the tracks, not the road. Oil lanterns, shades on the windows. And of course the caboose. They haven't used these in many, many years. The employees would ride back here, sit up top, have a view. What a what a life back then to be on working on the railroad. Tiny little sink. Well done. 
this very well done. Well, we're going to go outside and wait for the two trains to take off. We'll catch them. They're still boarding. I talked to that guy in here. He goes, this perfect time of day to come down here. You see everything early morning. So if you get a chance, come down to this museum. Make sure it's early. You'll see a lot more. Okay, let's head outside. I just heard that one guy say it's going to be another half hour. But there's a lot of people getting on those trains, yeah. If we say we'll go walk around downtown or something here, see the old buildings. Like gift shop, caboose coffee, <laughs> vending. You'd really want to take a lot of water with you if you went on this. Where you buy your tickets in here. Depends what kind of ticket you buy, but you can spend one to two hundred dollars per seat per person. So it'd be a family of four, you'd have three, four, five hundred dollar rides. So I'm saying I'd do it in the fall to catch fall colors. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, here's a little bit of the downtown. We drove through here a little while ago. Neat old buildings. Nothing's opened up yet, still too early. All the flowers in the planters looking good. We've seen a lot of that so far this summer. Old town's really taking care of it. All the businesses named like with railroad names, the Overland. Very colorful. Perfect. Right next to a parking meter. <laughs> but I bet parking is a premium. I was lucky getting that lot when I did. They only had so many oversized parking areas for like vans, RVs. Here you go, Christmas in Durango. They got a Christmas shop. Way too early for that stuff. Well, we can just walk down to the tracks from here. Looks like a few more shops, outside seating. Ooh, bakery. No, I don't need that stuff. I've really been trying to be good and watch myself. It's hard when you're traveling. And the kind of food you can eat and buy. Here's the Lone Spur Cafe, it's open.
Roxy's. Well, pretty neat downtown area. But you know what? I don't want to miss the train taking off. So we say let's head on down to the tracks. Watch them guys uh, peel out of here. I just noticed this is a hotel here in the corner. That'd be pretty cool. You could spend the night. Because a nine hour train ride, I mean, that's all day long. You leave it, okay, they're leaving at eight. So you wouldn't get back here until five, six o'clock at night. It's a long day on one of these old trains. There's the diesel. So they're going to hook him up first, looks like. Here you go, a whole train load. The steam engine will be the next one going out. See if we can get anyone to wave. Hey, one, two. Come on, wave. There's one. <laughs> I'm waving. Everyone's looking straight out. There's a wave. Yay. <laughs> But they're going to have fun. Wow, that's a lot of people on there, huh? Car after car. There's them open seats. That guy's going to get hot. In the straight sun all day. And here's the conductor holding his hat. Now this is the one you want to ride. You want the noise, the steam. <laughs> There's the 482 ready to rock and roll. They don't mess around. They move uh, pretty quick. He's going to lock on some cars. They're loading up the train. These guys are going to get on the tracks here, too. And it's selfie time. Everyone's taking selfies. They got about 15 minutes for the 482 fires up that boiler. Isn't that something? Those are, this is cool. They got safety signs all over. They're pretty safety conscious. Gotta be, huh? Responsible for a lot of people. What a job to be an engineer on this thing. Conductors. All the porters and people that work. There's a lot of people working on this thing.
Doesn't that cool? Old See, I'd ride this one instead of that diesel. Guess you have a choice. <laughs> wave, come on, wave. We gotta get someone to wave. There you go, open car. There's one, two. <laughs> Love it. Come on, someone's got a wave. Nope. There, there you go. <laughs> She'll have a fun today, huh? So they got yellow cars and red cars. I wonder if it's uh, this a price difference or what? Huh? Who knows? I'm sure they'll have fun. That was just pure fun. <laughs> Feel like a kid doing stuff like that. I think it's more fun to watch them go out than to have to, have to sit on that thing for nine hours. I don't know. Well, maybe someday. If they had shorter trips, it wouldn't be so bad either. Of course, you wouldn't make it all the way up. Silverton's a little ways up there. Actually, tomorrow we're going to be driving through Silverton. But right now, we're going to drive through uh, Durango here a little bit. About 10 miles uh, north of town here, there's a hot springs called Pickerton Hot Springs. Right alongside the highway. So, kind of looked cool on Google Maps. I thought we'd try to find it. This is definitely a good sized town here. There is a lot of businesses. We, we've been going quite a ways since we left that train station. There's a campground out this way too. I'm going to spend the night. Get, we'll get an early start tomorrow. Go up over the million dollar highway. That should be one epic video. I think we're getting close to the end of town here. Should be about another, maybe a little farther than 10 miles up. Be sure to check out my website, rbrtv.tv, so you can sign up for the free newsletter. I'm putting a newsletter out twice a month now on the 20th and the 5th of every month. And that's a good way to keep track of the travels. I'll be posting where I'm at, upcoming events and travels and whatnot. Plus, there's all kinds of cool stuff to get. We've got cookbooks, coloring books, activity books, merch, t shirts, mugs. Get you a RV there yet, t shirt or mug? Why not? help support the channel and help support this kind of travel. So once again, go to rbrtv.tv. Pretty blue sky, a few light clouds. It's heating up though. One nice thing in that museum back there, they had a lot of fans going because you could really feel the heat. There's no air conditioning in any of those buildings or anything. So, Of course, around here, they get more cold weather, I'm sure, than hot. Winters here would be pretty chilly. <laughs> now we're starting to move. I see mountains. Getting out of that big town of Durango. Look at that, there's a trolley. Main Avenue trolley. So we're gonna head up here a little ways. It's called Pinkerton Hot Springs.
very fast paced road. It's kind of hard to film these. There's some pretty mountains. Definitely in Colorado for sure, huh? It's just picture perfect no matter where you look right now. Green, trees, mountains, blue sky. Another train track. I bet that train came up through here. It follows through this valley. There's a river that runs through here too. Gold country, mining, all kinds of stuff. There's campgrounds up through here. We're almost there. I think this is it right up here, this pull out. Traffic's moving fast. Yep, this is it. Up here where that car is. Look how the minerals have built up and made all these colors. There's algae growing through it. This is what I've seen on Google Maps. Look at this thing, and there's hot water boiling out of it. Isn't this cool? Well, that's pure mud. You gotta take my word for it. <laughs> there's a storyboard. Don't climb on the hot springs. I bet that is just slippery like ice. And the road down below is the hot springs too. I guess that's where all the water goes. But there's hot springs all over this region. Pagosa Springs, we've seen them. I mean, they're, they're everywhere around here. A lot of resorts. Yep. Feels warm, not hot, just warm. Maybe I can get on the back side of this thing and see where it's going down the hill. But right here along this major highway. And it comes from up there somewhere. <laughs> I slip and fall, promise you won't laugh. This stuff is like ice. Made it. <laughs> oh yeah. We're safe here. Wow, look at the amount of water. That's 24-7 coming out. Hot water. It's like a piece of artwork, isn't it? Wonder how many people drive by and don't even notice or care about this. But if you get a chance, you're driving this 550, stop. See this thing. Okay, I got the phone. I'm going to try to zoom in a little closer to get the colors here. You got oranges, yellows, reds, greens.
And it's just cutting right through there. All minerals, huh? Well, what a fun day. I, this is one for the memory books, getting to go see that uh, museum and uh, just explore around Durango. What a cool town. Right down there is that resort. There's the river, railroad tracks down through there. The train comes straight up through here, so they get to see these sites because that train goes clear up to Silverton. But what a pretty valley, pretty place. Well, just got a few miles. I'm going to call it. Go check out this campground. Got a little uh, computer work to get caught up on, but tomorrow we're going to hit the road early. Check it out, this is Highway 550. Also known as the Million Dollar Highway, we're going to go from uh, Durango to Silverton, Uray, all the way up. This drive has been on my bucket list for years. I've never done it, but we're going to do it together like right now. Got an early start this morning. Should be a fun ride. The heat is on across the country too. But guess what? Up here, it won't be hot. <laughs> We're gonna be way up in the mountains. Might even see a little snow, who knows. So this should be one epic pretty ride. Everything I've read, everything I've heard about this drive, it's just ideal. And here's our first stop, Coal Bank Pass. We're at 10,000 feet in elevation. Well, this is too cool for school, and definitely cool. <laughs> Almost need to put my jacket on. <laughs> I mean, the heat wave is really cooking the country right now. And I'm up here in 55 degree weather. Of course, it's early, it probably heats up during the day here. Well. Take a little cruise around. I see some storyboards up here. Actually, I see some vans over there parked. Must be able to camp along the road here. One thing about Colorado, there is open land camping all over this state. Looks like I've got restrooms. Let's see what this one says. Coal Bank Pass Summit, 10,660 feet. San Juan Skyway. Absolutely gorgeous up here. Boy, they did some serious mining up here too. Minerals, gold, silver. I can't wait to get up that town, Silverton too. That should be pretty cool. 
Air's kind of thin, a little harder to breathe. But I'm starting to get a little acclimated. Being in Colorado for a few days now. Wasn't that train station cool? Down there in Durango, that museum. I really enjoyed that. Oh boy, here's our first view. Yay. <laughs> Looks like a lot of trees. <laughs> Following the Utes Trail, okay. So Native Americans, they came up through here, I'm sure. Boy, way before the roads were developed. High elevation residents. Oh, the birds. I'm trying to shade the sun off the lens. That's why you see my hand. Wow, they ran power lines through here. Just smells fresh up here too. Really smell the pine. We are in avalanche country. Oh no. Well, don't have to worry about it today, huh? But the snow still melting up here. The rivers are full. Lots of good water. Well, what we say, we'll jump in this van and start trucking this uh, million dollar highway. Look at this view opening up. Yay. I'll find a pull off. We'll stop. Yeah, that is a long ways down there on the right. Let's go down a little farther. That was one there. Just a sea of trees, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Speed limit, 40 miles an hour, you got that right. I wouldn't be flying down this hill. There's gonna be a lot of switchbacks. There was one, let's keep going a little bit. Get down a little ways, that way we can look back up on the mountain. Sun's just getting up now, getting out of the shaded areas. You know me, I like to get out early. truck a long ways. Ooh, let's uh, stop here. That truck, that's a slow ride in a truck going over this mountain. Oh, this is perfect. What do you say? Let's check her out. Look how the road is just carved in the side of the mountain. <laughs> that's the shot I wanted to capture. See tiny little patches of snow up there. Okay, ready? We're going to look over the edge. <laughs> it's a long ways down there. I hear water running too. That is quite the drop off. Look at that. There is. There's a creek running down through there. And I think we got a waterfall. We sure do. Go back up and check that out. Well, that is just gorgeous, huh? That water just cascading down through there. All right. We say, let's continue on. Yeah, 
has a cool little stop there, that waterfall. All right, looks like we're heading downhill for a while. And there's no guardrail. I mean, that's it. <laughs> they get feet of snow up here when they plow. Look at that truck heading up. He's moving along pretty good. But look at that view right up over the pass right there. You can see the road cutting through. I had to stop here a second, this sign kind of caught my eye. Big old pull out here. Lime Creek Burn Area, 1879, 26,000 acres consumed. In 1911, they started a replanting of this entire area. There's your Kodak moment. Patches of snow above the tree lines. That shows how high we are in elevation. There's that power line, that creek down through there. And the million dollar highway just carved right through the side of the mountain. Yeah, look at all them trees. They did a really good job replanting them, huh? They're huge. Pretty cool stop, I bet there's many more. Yeah, let patches of snow. Middle of a heat wave in the summer. <laughs> Love it. What a pretty drive. Wonder how many people travel through here. It has to be a lot. Well, Silverton, Durango, all these are tourist towns. Plus, in the winter, they're skiing up here a bit. We are definitely starting to climb up. That sign said Andrews Lake. But my ears are popping. <laughs> Looks like we're getting near the top. Speed limit's 50. What's this sign coming up say? Molus Pass. We're way up. All of a sudden the trees got let out, didn't they? We're almost up to the tree line. <laughs> oh wow, big pole out here. Cool, I need a little break. So far, pretty easy travel, kind of busy, kind of hard to film. In certain areas, it gets fast paced. These people aren't as slow as me. They got the little cars, a van, you got to take it easy around all the corners. Okay, what do you say? Let's check out Molus Pass. What a view, every which way you look. We'll walk up top. Looks like they got some storyboards and stuff up there. So there's restrooms, big parking area. Air's thin. <laughs> Doesn't take much to lose your breath. Think of the miners that worked up here.
Tons of snow. Ooh, little pond down there. Wow. Absolutely perfect. Bet there's fish in there, huh? Well, we'll go up and check these storyboards. Look at all the snow yet. San Juan Sculptures. Talking about the geology of here. this one legacy for future generations cool saving history gotta save it hopefully young people come up here and appreciate all this oh say can you see yes I can <laughs> talking about the mountain and the view they definitely have a view here. And it's supposed to be the cleanest air in the country right here. It says take a deep breath. They actually measured it here. Wow. Perfect. William Henry Jackson's third eye. Talking about a photographer. Photographed this area back in the late 1800s. Packing his uh, gear on a mule. What an adventure that would be. My goodness. So we're at 10,910 feet here. That is a long ways up. Shouldn't be that much farther from Silverton. We're just up here among the clouds. What a perfect day, too. We're lucky on the weather. A lot of vans. You see tons of vans cruising up through here. Perfect vehicle to explore the mountains. Campgrounds up through here, too. I kind of looked online. Everything's pretty much sold out. Because I tried to get find a place in Silverton. There's nothing. Of course, look at the time of year.
We are dropping down quick. According to the phone, Silverton's just right up the road. Curious uh, what kind of town that's going to be. Should be cool. This is definitely one windy stretch through here, just back and forth. Oh, cool. Look at that. There's town straight ahead. Maybe I can pull off in one of these little side areas. Look at that. There's Silverton. Nestled down that valley. And that is a straight off drop. <laughs> I'm not going to fit in that one. Hopefully I can find one up here before we get down. The traffic sure picked up. Oh, here's one. Yay. Let's stop. Wow, all the water flowing through town, huh? Think of the mining that went on here. There is mines everywhere. That's probably why they named it Silverton, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Well, what do you say? Let's head on down to town. A lot more traffic. Pretty fast pace, too. It's hard to slow down in some areas. Got lucky there. That's a pretty good little pull out. Even a few clouds moving through now. We had clear blue sky. Imagine the weather up here at this elevation changes by the hour. Just clean and fresh up here. Perfect. Ooh, signs. Let me pull in there. Get a shot of those signs where we head in town. Plus, I gotta change uh, batteries in the camera. We've been recording a lot of footage so far. Welcome to historic Colorado mining country. I bet. Think of all the years miners have come up through here absolutely incredible well we say let's head on in town Well, we'll make a little stop here for a little while, maybe walk the streets. Now the next stretch, I think, what I read, um, it's supposed to be even as scenic or more scenic. And we want to go straight here, looks like the highway stays off to the left. But they got ski lodges around here. Airbnbs, all that stuff. Well, there's a look back at the mountain we just crossed over to get here. <laughs> A 
look at the old buildings. Wow. How cool is this? Colorful, old brick. Always like the colors of these old uh, towns and buildings. A lot of effort goes into restoring. How old do you think that building is? Cool wind is way up top. That kind of architecture they'll never do again. Wow. Quite a few cars parked, still pretty early yet. Look at the dome on this building up here on the right. That's cool. Need a break for a little while. Stretch the legs. Pretty cool trip so far today though, isn't it? Looks like fire department. Oh, here's our courthouse it looks like. I see parking right out front. This will be perfect. Let me get turned around here. Big old building, huh? the test of time so far. But the snow is deep here in the winter though. Alright, we say we'll go for a little bit of a walk. Van's all locked up. Yep. Look how green everything. You know, being from Arizona, I'm just not used to the greenery. <laughs> Always seeing desert. There's a little church there. Town's just waking up, huh? What a view you have here. at all the mines up there who knows how long those have been there probably a hundred years just leave your house go up the hill start mining come back I don't know what it is about that building there but Two big pine trees in front. That'd make a perfect postcard picture. Look at the rounded stone archway on this thing. I bet it's one of those National Register Historic Buildings. Yep. Absolutely gorgeous. Even the trash can is old. <laughs> Tease and joke. 
waiting for old Clint Eastwood or someone to ride down the street on a horse with the music playing. Tremendous effort goes into keeping these old buildings going. Wonder if they're haunted, huh? Probably expensive to live up here. You're a long ways from a Walmart or Home Depot's. You gotta have everything shipped up here. Handlebars Restaurant. A lot of antiques in that place. Fits the area though, doesn't it? Looks like they got outside seating. Here's a coffee bar. Temperature is absolutely perfect. It's probably about 77 degrees, 78. What's this one? Storyteller Indian Store. That is just loaded full of stuff. Come up here and shop to your drop. Little, quite a few stores, a little bit of everything, huh? This is where the train comes up from Durango that we've seen at the museum. Durango, Silverton, Narrow Gauge Railroad comes all the way up here and then you take a bus back from up here. Hi. Got the troops out. <laughs> <laughs> Folks walking their dogs. Here's a brewery. Just a little bit of everything, outside seating. And almost every one of these buildings has one of those signs being National Register Historic Places. Definitely a tourist trap though, huh? Orange crate gifts. See what this building is. I like that dome up there. I don't know, there's something about this building looks so cool. It's their town hall. Okay, it's got all their town offices. What a structure. Up top says 1908. That's how old that thing is. Well, fun little stop, but I want to get back on the road. Hopefully the traffic doesn't pick up too much more. We've got a few miles till we get up to O'Ray, Colorado, and this next section of uh, the Million Dollar Highway should be as good as the first or even better. Maybe at a different time you could get up here. Like I said, I tried finding a campground, any place to stay, and everything was absolutely sold out. But you can understand why this is the coolest place you can come to. Nine, ten thousand feet in elevation, nice and cool weather, perfect Colorado mountain town. Here's our turn. Should, yep. 
right back on the highway 550 right here. Big old sign, watch out for falling rocks and wildlife. According to the phone, let's see, we only got about 24 miles to get up to your way. But I bet it's a slow ride. We're going to twist and turn up through here. Hey, for more information on my travels, be sure to check out my website, rvrtv.tv. Sign up for my free newsletter. I'm putting it out twice a month now on the 5th and 20th of the month. Plus there's free screensaver downloads you can sign up for, get those. And I have all kinds of merch, hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs. Grab some merch, it helps support the channel and this kind of travel. And I appreciate it very much. Once again, it's rvrtv.tv. No matter where you look up here, it's just like a picture postcard. Absolutely incredible. You'd have to travel through here a few times to really find all the hidden secrets. I'm sure the hills are loaded. I'd love to go in one of them old mines, especially the metal detector. <laughs> But you can see the spoils, you can see where they mined up the hills. Looks like this is where you put your chains on, they got a gate to close the pass. What a view from the rear view camera there, huh? That's good to see that kind of snow. You know, that snow will be up there all summer. They're going to get blasted again this winter. What a blessing to have that kind of snowfall this year. blue sky back that direction but a little farther north we're going we're getting into a few clouds looks like some boondockers over there to the left join the high mountains there's got to be camp areas all over up here Now we're starting to climb back up. So far the road has been absolutely great. It's not beat up. A lot of times you go to these uh, mountain passes and uh, from the snow and ice the roads get pretty broken up. But this is one very well maintained road. I can actually see the road off to the right. Looks like we're going to go through a big switch back up here. Cool, maybe we can stop, find a pole out. Well, there's another Kodak moment straight ahead. <laughs> Get your cameras out. Love it. There's that same truck we've been passing him a few times now along the way. Still a challenge to drive a truck over these roads. 
be slow, a lot of hill climbing. Here's our switchback. We're curving right around. What do you say? Let's stop, check the view, huh? Before we get up too much higher. Look at this. There goes our truck. <laughs> What a gorgeous valley we just drove through. I'd say we're getting close to the tree line. Trees are getting a lot smaller. Higher up we get. There's that road. And that switchback we just came around. Get a picture of the van. Let's see here. How's that? Now the van's happy. <laughs> All right, let's keep rolling. There's the front camera, and I'll show you. We have the rear camera mounted right there. That's what's giving you all the great footage today. Two GoPros. And I have this handheld camera inside the cab with me. So we're capturing footage from every angle we can. Up we go. I think this next pass, we're going to be way up. One of them is like 12,000 feet. I think this is the one coming up. That's a long drop off to the right and there's no guardrail. If you're scared of heights, this might not be the best highway to take. But what scenery, my goodness, look at this. Like I said earlier, this has been on my bucket list for a lot of years, long time. I've always heard about it, read. A lot of folks have always told me, if you ever get up this direction, be sure to take this million dollar highway drive. It's a little slow, but it's worth it. And just like the train ride from Durango to Silverton would be worth it too. Different time of year, fall colors would be perfect. Oh my goodness. What a place to come to for fall colors. All right, I'd say we're getting up near the top. Trees are getting way small now, aren't they? It's always a tell sign where you're, how high up you're getting. Ooh, I see a sign off to the left. Let's stop. Go there and check it out. Welcome to Red Mountain Pass, 11,000 feet. That's San Juan County. And there's a different county with uh, two different national forests. <laughs> cool. Here's their official marker, 11,018 feet. Million dollar highway. Wow. And we did it. We did it today, huh? Now 
that marker said this road was built in 1890. Then they improved it in the 1920s. Oh boy. Well, it's probably downhill from here, huh? <laughs> Don't know. So for, what, 24 miles from Silverton, it's been a very long 24 so far. Wow, high mountain, little lake there, little pond. Just full of fresh water. Well, we're rolling along pretty good. Not really much traffic. Oh, <laughs> I spoke too soon. Look at this. <laughs> I'd say we gotta wait. Should have brought my gold pan with me. We're gonna wait for a little while. Hey, hey, we're rolling. Looks like we're heading down now. Well, when else can they do the, this type of construction? It has to be in the summer. I talked to them two guys on the bike. They're heading to the Tetons. What a nice place to, if you have to do road work, be up here all summer long, nice and cool. This is the only really road construction I've run into though, not bad at all. What a good road to ride a motorcycle on. Okay, what do we have up here? We're moving along pretty good. That must be their construction area down off to the right. Talk about some switchbacks. Pretty dramatic, huh? Oh, I just spotted an overlook. Wonder if it's open. I think it is. I gotta make a left here. I'll get out of this line of cars too. Cool. Let's check this out. There's some old buildings. Probably from mining, huh? Alright, what do you say? Check out some more view. There's an actual mine across the road. Wonder if it's still active. That's what those buildings must be for, part of the mine.
Reclaiming the land. This is a mine called the Idorado. Three and a half mile tunnel connecting it to Telluride, Colorado. Wow. Isn't that something? Six towns sprung up on Red Mountain Mining District in less than eight square miles up here back when it boomed. These boards are kind of faded, hard to read. The Yankee Girl Mine. Most valuable mine in the United States. Wow. Isn't this something? Back in the day, thousands of people up here striking it rich. What a pretty place, except in the winter. <laughs> You'd be buried in snow. All right, let's keep on trucking. Three and a half mile tunnel, and you know they did it all by hand back in those days through these mountains must have been super rich with ore yeah these buildings have to be part of the old mining days if those walls could talk huh Well, you never know what you'll find up through here. More switchbacks coming up. What a huge valley off to the right. I see buildings down there too. Look, there's more buildings up here. There's got to be camping up in here somewhere, too. I'll definitely come back here someday. This is one to explore again, get some more local knowledge. Maybe a little different time of year, fall colors, something like that. Make it kind of a different trip. Road starting to open up a little bit too. Getting a little faster pace. Shouldn't be too much farther up to your way. Straight road, look at this. Looks like a chain up area. See some old building up here in the right too.
What a ride over that Red Mountain Pass. My goodness. There's your Kodak moment. Mountain lake along the highway, mountains in the background, blue sky, few clouds. We are dropping quick. My ears are popping. <laughs> this has probably been one of the most spectacular continuous drives I have taken. I don't, can't remember when. Maybe like when I was up in Wyoming going across that Highway 14 that one time. It was something like this but not near as dramatic with the big mountains this is definitely epic i hope everyone's enjoying this as much as i am pretty big areas for snow removal equipment all their gravel for the roads. Another semi. Oh, look at this. What is this? Oh. Probably for snow avalanches and stuff. Shoots it straight over the road. Wow. Built that right on the edge of that rock. That's incredible. That's a lot of concrete. Probably saves a lot of lives, too. This is beautiful through here. Not much berm on the other side either. Drop straight off. This is probably where they close the road a lot in the winter. Look at that, you can see right off the edge, right there. This is something to drive. I'm hanging on to the steering wheel pretty tight. <laughs> wow, what a ride. Wow, I wonder what's here. A few cars. Maybe a trail or something to hike. Well, we'll keep going.
we are just right on the edge of a mountain side. That dropped straight down, probably uh, hundreds of feet, maybe a thousand. Incredible. <laughs> Love it. I'm glad I'm on this side. <laughs> what a view though, huh? Hopefully there's a pole out or something up here. Yeah, we're getting out of the narrow part. That was narrow going through there, wasn't it? Ooh, I see cars. Let's see if I can pull over in there. Nothing coming. Well, yeah, we'll look for another one. One thing about this van, it's so darn long. It's hard to park it some places. Bunch of cars there off to the right. Oh, another tunnel. Cool. I see a spot coming up. Look at this, we can pull in here. Yay. Let me get parked. This is perfect. Lookout point. Your way, Colorado, Switzerland of America, lookout point. So let's look out. There's town. Now how would you like to live here? Oh my goodness. That is gorgeous. That's kind of a similar board that was up there at uh, Silverton. Travel. Boy, those are badly faded. Preserving the past. Let me walk over here. Maybe we can get a good shot of town over here. Here you go. We got a view here. Bunch of old buildings. There's Main Street. We're going to be driving right through there in just a minute. Surrounded by these beautiful mountains. Well, we say let's hop in the van. We'll cruise through this historic mountain town. Small town USA for sure here. Kind of a bad place to pull off there. <laughs> All right. Cruise town. This is, we're getting out of the mountains now. I think this is it. Last town through here.
I don't mind saying I'm a little wore out from driving this road. This has been uh, quite a little adventure. Miles-wise, it's not that far from Durango up through here, but a lot of stops, a lot of filming, a lot of great footage. We've captured a lot coming through here. Where else are you going to see something like this? Colorado has its own scenic wonders, especially western Colorado in the mountains. You get on the eastern part, it's just flat open prairie. Okay, I'd say we make made it into town here. Speed limit's dropping. Yep. Another old mining historic place. Small town USA. We definitely did back road small towns on this trip, even though it's a US highway. Very well maintained US highway. Western style buildings, all brick. Very well done. Touristy, but I mean, it is what it is here. Isn't this something? Perfect. There's campgrounds here and all that. Look, there's the Beaumont Hotel. Probably haunted. <laughs> Stores and shops. Picture perfect weather today. I can feel the heat heating up. I mean, as soon as we drop down about the last 10 miles, we're still up in elevation, but you can definitely feel the heat. Flower baskets on the light poles. This looks a little more modern down here at this end of town, doesn't it? Well, fun, fun trip today. Highway 550, million dollar highway. I can see why they call it million dollar. I still keep thinking about that three and a half mile tunnel up there at, was it, Red Mountain Pass, or whatever it was. Going over to that one town, Telluride. An amount of mining, the boom towns, what the six boom towns and eight square miles, just thousands of people up there. Thank you for watching this once in a lifetime series, especially this one. This was one for the memory books about traveling through southwest Colorado through the Rocky Mountains in these small towns on this million dollar highway. There's a part two to this coming up, cutting across Colorado on US Highway 50. 
So stay tuned for more Once in a Lifetime series on RVR TV. Talk soon. <laughs>